The next thing we need to do is we want to implement the same functionality using chain of command. Again, you only need to do one or the other, um, but some people may prefer to use uh, one method versus the other. So first thing we need to do is actually comment out um, our form handler code um, to make sure that it doesn't uh, run and give us kind of a false positive of our chain of command working. So now that I've commented out the code, we can look at the chain of command code. For chain of command, we always start with creating a new class. So again, you can right click on your project, say add class. In my case, I've called my class tutorial cuss table underscore form underscore extension. So I'll go ahead and open that up. Um, this is kind of the almost complete code. So let's talk through it. The first thing we need to do when we create a new class um, using chain of command is we need to add an attribute to the class definition to let the compiler know that this class contains code for our form. So we add the square bracket extension of parentheses form string parentheses cuss table. So this really tells us the name of the form in this case cuss table and this tells the compiler that this is uh, extension of that form. So in, in this case I, I named it underscore extension um, at the end and I also use the keyword final. The next thing we need is really two methods. We're going to add an init method and a method for our lookup. So let's start with our method for our lookup. Typically you have to name the lookup method lookup, um, but in this case uh, we actually can name this method whatever we want because we are going to be registering this method as our lookup method. So I decided to call it overridden cuss group lookup. You can name it whatever you want. Um, it needs to take a form string control if you were using a different type of um, uh, control, then you would use a slightly different uh, form control. In this case, uh, the cuss group is a string, so I use a form string control. The next piece of code should look exactly the same as it did before for the form handler. I'm using sysTable lookup, I'm adding my three columns, and I'm saying f perform uh, form lookup. I actually don't need a cancel super in this case because I'm not really overwriting a base one here. I'm um, specifying a new method of what code needs to be run. Okay, now the important and kind of tricky part. We need to extend the init method so that we can register this new lookup method. So here's the base init method. I need to call next init, which allows the base init code to run and kind of initialize the form. This method gets called when the form first opens. But then uh, after that, I need to register this lookup method as the lookup method that should be used for this form control. I can do that really in two different ways. Let's start with this one. Um, in the case of this cuss table, I can actually see that this control is named posting underscore cuss group. And if I look at the properties, I can actually see that the auto declaration uh, property is set to yes. What this means is that I'm allowed to use the name of this control directly in X++ code um, and reference it. If this were not set to yes, then I wouldn't be able to reference this name directly. But since it is, let's take a look at what we would do. We can provide the name of the control, then dot register override method. We can tell um, this method what method we're trying to override a little confusing there but this tells it that we're going to override the lookup method as opposed to another method on the control and then this second parameter is going to tell us what methods we're going to use uh, for that code replacement in this case we're going to tell it use the form method that's on cuss table and use the method that's named overridden cuss group lookup. So here we go here and this contains our lookup code. And that's it. 
Um, however, not all form controls will have that auto declaration property set to yes. Um, if that's the case, we can write one extra line of code to be able to find that form control right here w without it actually having the auto declaration property set to yes. So the, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and comment out this line and uncomment these two lines above. So in this case, um, I have this line here where I'm going to use the this keyword. Um, to say look at the design on this form, grab the control name, and find the control name uh, that is name posting underscore cuss group. I still need to know the name of the control, um, but in this case I'm putting it inside of uh, this function, and this function is actually going to get me the control object and store it in a variable. Once I have that control object in a variable, I can call register override method, and then I'm, I'm finished. So I'll go ahead and save that. If I were to build and compile this and go back to the form and reload my browser form, I would see my three columns as well. So in conclusion, we've looked at two different ways. You can override a lookup method on an existing form or a form in a different model than your, your own. This can be used on more methods than just the lookup method, um, but this is really useful in case you want to change the functionality of a base form. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.